briefly now, what we're going to do is uh, just finish this part up uh, and talk about other things that regulate uh, enzyme activity or uh, affect how enzymes work. Uh, and I've listed over here two environmental uh, characteristics uh, versus chemical um, characteristics. So we have uh, molecules that can bind to enzymes and uh, they speed them up, help them work better. We have molecules that can bind to enzymes and slow them down or shut them down completely. What we're going to look at are, are other factors um, that can um, alter how an enzyme does its job. The first one we're going to look at is temperature. So increasing temperature, and we're going to look at rate of reaction. So this is a little bit like some of the other graphs, but different. You'll see it's going to uh, have some unique properties to it. So what we'll see is that, you know, and, and uh, um, as that temperatures rise, we're going to see that the rate of reaction will rise. Now, one question would be why? You know, why does that happen? So increasing temperature, increase temperature, increase rate. So why is that? Well, temperature is heat. Heat is energy, so uh, there's more available energy. So the available energy is going to allow the enzyme um, to speed up the reaction partly because uh, that energy is going to be there to um, supply the activation energy that's required. In addition, the molecules are going to be moving around faster, which is the other aspect of it. So um, previously we talked about concentration uh, having an effect on the rate of reaction as well. And in this case, um, it, it was due to interactions between the substrate molecule and the enzyme. So if in this case, um, the molecules are moving very slow because it's a really cold temperature, they're less likely to interact. And there's not going to be much heat in the environment to supply uh, the activation energy. As the temperature rises, the molecules start moving faster and faster, and you're going to see more and more interactions. So you're going to see the, the rate of reaction speed up and speed up. But now we're going to see something different happen in the curve here. We're going to hit a point, and then we're going to drop off like this. So one of the questions would be, you know, why, um, why would that happen? So what, what happens here? Well, right before we hit that point, right before we hit this place here, what we're going to find is a, a temperature that would be an optimal temperature. It's a temperature, again, where the rate of reaction is very high. Uh, because of the, all the interactions and uh, the energy being supplied. So why, if we increase the energy, does then the reaction stop here in this particular case? The reason would be because the enzyme, remember, has this unique three-dimensional shape. That's just a generic one. Within that three-dimensional shape, remember, there are alpha helices. There are zigzag beta strand beta sheet structures. Okay. There are all these folded parts that collectively make up this three-dimensional, so this is just drawn here flat, but there'd be it's a three-dimensional molecule that has a lot of hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen bonding within the enzyme itself gives it its shape and structure. There's ionic bonds too, and then there's going to be some covalent bonds as well. Um, so if you think back of tertiary structure of a protein, that's, that's what we're talking about here. Too much energy starts to break these bonds. So the hydrogen bonds are, are broken or disrupted at high temperatures. Essentially, it just gets too hot and the enzymes essentially fall apart. So there's not any activity because there's no enzymes to help aid the reactions. Right? So the reactions then don't occur uh, at those temperatures. The thing is, for different organisms and different enzymes, there can be different optimal temperatures. So if you're an organism living uh, in a very cold climate and you're always in a cold climate all the time, 
you know, your optimal temperature, you know, may be right here, really low, or maybe have a really low optimal temperature. Uh, and other organisms who live, say, in uh, hot springs, they can have actually very high optimal temperature. So, at, you know, say our body temperature, there's almost nothing going on, you know, in these cells. The the enzymes are, are, are they could work, but maybe they're not even shaped quite properly. There's very little energy to overcome activation energy because of the nature uh, of the way those particular enzymes work. Uh, so you need a lot more heat uh, to eventually get the reactions moving. Uh, and you'll see this uh, again with different organisms that live in, in different sorts of environments. So that's that's temperature. Okay. Now the thing is, what we're going to see is something very similar to this happen with pH. Usually with pH, it's not as abrupt. So with temperature, you usually see this drop off because um, the proteins become denatured, right? So hydrogen bonds are broken, the shape changes, the, the protein doesn't have the binding sites really functional anymore, so nothing happens. Remember, pH is hydrogen ion concentration. As we increase the pH, it becomes more acidic, right? So proteins, which have a three-dimensional shape, largely based on bonds between, say, the R groups, uh, hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, covalent bonds, nonpolar interactions, all these things, they're going to be affected by charge of the environment. So the pH is essentially here representing the environmental charge. So for this protein to be shaped just the right way, it has to be present in a particularly charged environment. And we'll see sort of the same thing, although for this one, you, we usually see a little more of a, a sloped curve. Right. So at more um, at higher pHs, we might see a lower reaction. At lower pHs, we might see a lower reaction. But then there is some sort of optimal pH where the reaction is going to be really high because that is just the best pH for the folding of the protein. So it's in its proper shape. It's in its best possible shape to attract and bind with the substrate molecule and move the reaction forward. Okay, so. Um, and again, this what is optimal pH? It's different. It's different for, for different enzymes. Even now, in, in your body, um, optimal temperature for most of the enzymes is pretty much the same because of your body temperature. Optimal pH is, is very different. Enzymes that work well in your stomach uh, work well at a pH of 2. Um, enzymes in the cytoplasm of your cell, they don't work at all at pH 2. They work more closely at a pH 7, at a more neutral pH. So depending on where the enzyme is, even within a cell, uh, it's going to have a different optimal pH. All right? And so then different organisms that live in different environments will also then experience some of these same sorts of things. So uh, environmental conditions, heat, energy, um, charge of the environment, these things will affect essentially the shape of the protein, and that will then regulate how well it can work. So there's a certain point where they're working best best pH, optimal pH, the best temperature, an optimal temperature where it, there's a lot of energy there, but just not too much. Okay, There's a lot of hydrogen ions, but not, say, too much Okay, for the pH. So every enzyme has a sensitivity to, the, to those sorts of things. All right. Uh, so from now, we're going to then move into um, metabolism. So we're not going to be focused on the enzymes anymore. We're going to be focused more on just the, the reactions that are going to be happening.